Hi everyone, my name's Jordan and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought it would be fun to try to go through some of my favorite books on Goodreads and look at some of the one star reviews and I picked out some of the funnier ones I saw or ones that just got me heated. To, uh, to be fair, these are my favorite books obviously so anybody that says bad things about them gets me heated. But I do understand that not every book is for everyone. We all have different reading tastes. So take all of my rantings with a grain of salt. I do understand that not everyone likes the same books I do. So most of these books Actually, I think all of these books are books that I've talked about quite a bit on this channel, so they will not be a surprise for you to see them here. Um, so I'm just gonna go through some of these and read some of these reviews because they're hysterical. First up, I have Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This is one of my favorite books this year so far. I thought it was a masterpiece. I think in my tier ranking video, I put it as third of the year. Like, it is so wonderful. I absolutely love this book. Um, but I have said <laughs> many times that for like 70% of the book, you don't know what's going on. It is very confusing. Um, the story kind of gets flipped upside down. You don't know what's going on. Um, so I, this one I went into knowing that a lot of the one star reviews would be because of that. And I was not disappointed. So this person said, if I could sue an author for time wasted, this would be the book I'd do it with. This book made me want to scream. It is so bad. This series is for people who like to feel dumb while reading. I will not be continuing. <laughs> that second to last line is what got me. This series is for people who like to feel dumb while reading. Is that me? <laughs> Do I like to feel dumb while reading? <laughs> I read this comment and I had like this full spiral moment of just like, am I this person? <laughs> Do I just really, really crave feeling like everyone around me is smarter? And in life, I feel like the answer is definitely no, but maybe in books I like to be talked down to a little bit. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, a lot of my favorite books have kind of pretentious writing. I mean, like a lot of the dark academia I read reads very pretentious and I eat it up. So maybe, maybe that's my thing. Who knows? Next up, I have Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. I did the first one, even though it's not my favorite of the series, because normally if somebody is not gonna like a series, they'll know by like around the first or second book. So I went with the first one to get some of the juicy reviews. Um, this book is also up there in my favorite books of the year. The whole series were all five stars, are all in my favorite books. And I am not here to tolerate any Robin Hobb hate. If you have some Robin Hobb hate, take it off my channel. I don't want to hear it. She is a flawless writer with no faults. So with that being said, let's get into this review. This is one of the few books that I finished and wanted to chuck it across the room to hear it smack against the wall. I hated the ending. The only thing that could have made the ending worse is if it was a dream showed up. <laughs> so <laughs> The first and second book of the series, I listened, I listened to all of them as audiobooks, but the first and second one I listened to kind of back to back. So I couldn't quite recall what point was the end of Ship of Magic um, because I just couldn't remember like where one ended and when the other began. So I went and looked it up <laughs> and I don't really understand what they're saying. I mean, I guess a little bit because one of the characters like plot arcs ends in a weird way. Not ends, but like culminates for the book in a weird way. So I guess I kind of get it, but like... <laughs> I was just like, how could you, how could you hate this book? Like, I get that they're weird, like the premise of the whole Live Ship Traders trilogy is weird, but they're written so beautifully, and I also understand that they read slower than a lot of like action-packed fantasy, but like, you get such deep dives into the character, so I was just like, how could you not love the ending? <laughs> Even though it ends weird and maybe not how you wanted, doesn't that make better conflict for the next book? Like, doesn't that just set up for more character growth? Like, this is the stuff I eat up. And to see people being like, ah, uh, yeah, I didn't like that. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. How? Explain to me. I need more details. What did you not like about the ending? I need more, please. Next up is a, another kind of hot contested book that I see people either love or hate. So this one I went into knowing some of these one-star reviews would be juicy. And that is The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. 
So this book has also been in my top favorites of the year. I loved it. I ate it up. It's one of those books that everyone was talking about on Book Talk, and it's a huge, huge sensation right now. The second one comes out this year, and everyone's pumped for it that liked the first book. So, like, it is sensational. And I ate it up. Loved it. Adored it. I love the pretentious, dark academia setting that I mentioned earlier. I love having morally gray characters. I love messy relationships. Like, I eat it up. But I also understand that a lot of people don't like that. So this review is one of those. <laughs> Most boring book I have ever read. So disappointing. I don't understand how people like it. The writing style is so hard to follow. It's pretentious and impersonal. I feel no connection or empathy to any character and the change of narrator in every chapter is so annoying. Nothing happens in the book. And even when something does happen, it's confusing. There's no romance, just small crushes between people. Don't let the pretty pictures deceive you. Read a few chapters online to see if you like the writing but does it, because it doesn't get any better as the book goes on. <laughs> Let's dissect. So, the writing style is so hard to follow, it's pretentious and impersonal. Yes, love it. I adore it. <laughs> that To me, that was intentional because all of these characters are so morally gray and they've been like selected as these chosen few as like the smartest in the world. And so like they have these big heads, they are impersonal. They're making decisions to like affect the entire world. So I think that they are all pretentious and impersonal and morally gray. So like the writing reflects that and it's stunning. Next, I feel no connection or empathy to any character and the change of narrator in every chapter is so annoying. Feeling no connection and or empathy, I kind of get again because they're all morally gray. So like. If you, I, this, this reviewer makes it seem like it's somebody that doesn't typically read fantasy because not having a connection, I, I had connections to the characters, I loved the characters, but like I understand not having empathy towards the characters because they are all real, real stuck up. Like, I get it. But again, that's the kind of thing I loved about the book. But then the change of narrator in every chapter is so annoying. This made me think that they don't read fantasy because if you're reading a multi POV fantasy, you're getting a different character every chapter, almost guaranteed. So like uh, this makes me think that this person doesn't read fantasy and this was probably the worst <laughs> introduction to fantasy that somebody could pick up. If you don't read fantasy, do not read the Atlas Six because it is not representative of fantasy. Like don't go into it thinking like, this is how I'm going to start my fantasy journey. Read it. If you're not a fantasy reader and you want to read it, read it. But don't go into it thinking like this is this is what fantasy is like because it's not. <laughs> and then there is no romance, just small crushes between people. I'm wondering if they expected romance and that's why it's a negative because like I didn't go into it with really any expectations. Like there are some romantic elements, but there really is no romance. They're right. But like, I didn't go into the book looking for that, so maybe they did. Maybe like Book Talk misled them and said it was a great romance book, but it's not. It's definitely not. Um, don't let the pretty pictures deceive you. Read a few chapters online, blah, 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 blah. Um, the pictures are very pretty. Um, so let them deceive you. They're great because the characters are great. Anyway, this review cracked me up. I had to dissect it because there are a lot of points here that stuck out to me. <laughs> But let's move on. Next, I have A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman. This is um, a contemporary um, fiction book. And you guys know I don't read that genre, but I listened to this audiobook because I listened to Anxious People earlier last year and actually enjoyed it, um, which surprised me. Um, it was a quick read. The audiobook was really good. The narrator was great. So I decided to read A Man Called Uva. And this book was stunning like I when I finished it I was listening to the audiobook on my way home from work and I had to stop at Walgreens and I had like 20 minutes left in the audiobook and I sat in the Walgreens parking lot <laughs> to finish it and just was like bawling my eyes out and like everyone that was walking by my car was like looking a little concerned for me but I, I just couldn't be bothered like I was just like a mess it was a, I thought it was a very beautiful book um, there were, it was definitely a slow start. I was not feeling it in the beginning because um, it's just about a crotchety old white man with prejudices. So I was like, I'm really not going to get into this book. And I will, I will concede before I read this review that it is cheesy. The, the setup is very, very like, like it was, nothing was shocking. Like I, I wasn't reading the book and like, wow, what a twist. Like it was a pretty expected book. The ending was pretty expected but I still thought it was beautiful. So 
let's go into the review. It's kind of a long one. I wanted so much to like this book after reading all the great reviews. It sounded like just the kind of novel that I could really spend a few enjoyable days with. I read several chapters but was so annoyed at this man's constant grumbling about everything that I put it down for a couple days before trying again. Alas, it remained the same, grumbling, grouching, mean-spirited, hateful, know-it-all, and unpleasant, so I stopped again. I read another book and was ready to take it and this one back to the library but read some more wonderful reviews so I thought I should try again. I must be missing something or maybe I just have to read further. When he started throwing shovelfuls of snow at the stray cat, I had had enough. I just can't understand how so many people thought this man was funny, endearing, and cute. Maybe he came wonderful on the page after I stopped reading, but I could not wait for it any longer. Even if he did, I would always remember how awful he was in the beginning. This <laughs> yes. He is crotchety and awful. And that's the point. Like, to me, it's just like, the entire premise of this book is how unlikable he is. That's the whole book. Like, there's a little bit of redemption towards the end, but, and, like, there definitely is, like, some, like, like, he's he's just really not a great guy. He's not a good guy. So the whole point is is people, like, showing him care, um, even though, like, he's not very nice to them. And then he, like, it, the part that I really enjoyed is that he, like, really started to help people. And it was funny because he was helping people not for the reasons most people help people. Like, he would be like, they're such an idiot. How could they not know this? I'll just do it for them and show them how to do it so I don't have to do this again. Like, all of his reasonings for helping were, like, just funny to me. Like, I just found this book funny. And I never at one... I don't think at any point did I think, like, I think Uva is such a nice guy. He's such a great character. He's a great guy. No, even at the end when I was crying, I never thought like, wow, he lived life to the fullest. <laughs> like, but like this whole book was about like growth and, and I understand that he did, he was like really mean, but like, shouldn't we give people the chance to change even if they're old? Like, shouldn't we let people learn? Like it showed his growth and his learning, even though it was slow and maybe not the way people want it to be. Like he tried towards the end. And again, it doesn't excuse all of his previous bad behavior, but the writing style just makes it funny sometimes. Some of it was not funny. Some of it was like just bigoted, but some of it was just like, like especially his, a lot of his, um, like a lot of his reasonings for hating the younger generations always ended up just being so funny. And like, again, very stereotypical old guy in a book kind of thing, but I just found it funny and the end was endearing. I liked the surrounding characters. And so like, this person's right. He's annoying and he's a bad guy. Like, yeah, you're right. That's the point. <laughs> Next up, I have The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, which I talk about this book all the time. And it is a Greek mythology retelling and I thought it was beautiful. It's definitely a little bit slower and the writing is very lyrical, um, but I thought it was beautiful. And also this book broke me. I was sobbing at the end of this one as well. So let's read this review. It appears there are a ton of unpopular opinions on here. So here I am to share my not only unwanted but unpopular opinion on this one. I am going to fight book talk on this one. This book was such a drag to read. I pushed myself through this one because everyone was saying that the ending was so, so, so good, but alas, I have been let down once more. I found that this dragged on and honestly, the writing style was not my favorite. Not to mention there's a page where Agamemnon was mentioned literally nine times by name. It was painful. I cannot do it. Nope, nope, nope. So thanks for nothing, book talk. All you gave me was Evelyn Hugo. <laughs> I also read Evelyn Hugo and it was good. This book was better though. But anyway, this this one was funny. I, the, the, what, what I think is so beautiful about book talk in general is the way it's like pushing books that maybe would not have gotten the recognition before. Like The Atlas Six or Legends and Lattes. Like a lot of these self-published books are getting huge from book talk and then getting a publisher. And so these authors are getting this support, right? Song of Achilles is already pretty huge before book talk but it still introduced some people to the book. Um, so a lot of like Atlas Six was a book talk book. Like a lot of these ones that are from book talk because it has such a wide reach have some of the funniest um, reviews that are bad because they go into it not knowing a lot about it or they go into it with these high expectations because somebody else has told them they should read it. 
And so I just always think it's hysterical. And it also, like, gets people that don't normally read a genre to read that genre. So they don't like the book because they don't know they don't like that genre, I guess. So this one cracked me up. I didn't mind that Agamemnon was mentioned so much by name because I think it's very fun to say his name. <laughs> but, like, the fact that people say this book was a drag, like, I don't know. I get that there wasn't a whole lot going on. Like, I mean, there was, but, like, it wasn't the focus. Like, a lot of the plot was the background to Achilles and Patroclus' relationship. So, like, I get feeling like it was kind of slow, but, like, I didn't care because of the relationship growth throughout the book was just so beautiful and then the ending was just like wonderful the fact that anyone says this is boring tells me they probably don't like romance in books which is fine that is totally fine if you don't like romance in books that is your prerogative i ate it up next up i have fireborn by rosaria bunda we all know how i feel about this series no slander must befall this perfection of a series that's not even done yet. Anyway, let's get into this review. I wanted to like this book because of dragons, exclamation point, but it was just one more teen love triangle, snore. True, I'm not the target audience, but surely even actual young adults are getting sick of this plot line. Here's the thing. I saw a few reviews like this where they were like, we are tired of love triangles. Like, why is there even a love triangle? And the thing is, is to me, I eat romance up. I like romance in a fantasy book. So, like, I don't mind if there's romance mixed in with my fantasy, like, at all. To me, this book was... The love triangle in the book was, like, secondary. Like, here's this amazing plot with these amazing characters, and then, like, here's a love triangle that happens. But it was so unimportant to me when I was reading. Like, it was just another part of the character growth, but I was not, like... Like, the romance to me throughout all of these books has not been, like, me rooting for one person or, like, me, like... Like, some books, when there's a love triangle that's so annoying, you, like... You like, Hunger Games. Peta and Gail. Like, the whole time I was rooting Gail, right? Edward and Jacob. Like, those are the pivotal love triangles where the love triangle is a huge part of the book. To me... The love triangle is not big in this book. I I forgot there was a love triangle in the first book. I remember part of it in the second book, but I honestly could not remember that there was a love triangle in this book because to me, the plot is the winner here. So the fact that people focus on the love triangle and are like, the whole book's trash because there's a love triangle gets me so heated because this book is not about the romance. That's just another aspect to further these characters' incredible character arcs. Anyway, let's move on. Next I have Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. Again, I did the first one in this because I, I think the first books always have the best one-star reviews, but I do not think this is the best of the four that are out. Um, but let's get into it. I'm a big fan of Joe Abercrombie, Patrick Rothfuss, and George Martin. I'm always on the lookout for a well-written fantasy novels, and based on the glowing ratings and scores Sanderson's work received on Goodreads, I was optimistic about him. Unfortunately, he turned out to be a huge disappointment. His writing is immature, corny, sophomoric, and generally terrible. He's not even the same league as the top three I listed above. Total waste of time. Here's the thing, guys. <sighs> if you've watched some of my channel, you know my feelings on Patrick Rothfuss and George R. R. Martin. George R. R. Martin I have some respect for because I think that some of some of the Game of Thrones books, A Song of Ice and Fire, I enjoyed. And some of the plot lines I enjoyed. I just think that his books... I won't get into what I don't like about them. I didn't love those books. There were some I liked better than others, but I thought that they were going in a weird direction and I got bored by the... I didn't even finish the last one that's out. So, Patrick Rothfuss, on the other hand, I know... I know that Name of the Wind is huge. I know that people love the King Killer Chronicles. I could not stand that book. <laughs> I hated the Name of the Wind so much. I do not like that book. I thought it was boring. I thought that the narrator, the like main character, I understand he's supposed to be an unreliable narrator, but he was unimaginably boring to be in his head. <laughs> I hated, hated that book. So the fact that this person read The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson 
and thought that it was not as good as The Name of the Wind just blows my mind. I do not get it. I can understand some of the gripes about his writing. I don't think that it's immature, corny, and sophomoric, but I do think that his writing style is a little more, like, direct. Like, there's not as much, um, there's not as much, like, nuance, I feel like. I, I, maybe that's the wrong way to say it. I think that his writing style is very, um, man, I can't form the English language. What's my writing style like? I just think that his writing is definitely not as, like, lyrical and pretty. Like, he, he, he's telling the story. And it's kind of direct. It's on the page kind of thing. But the story is just, like... His plots are just incredible. His character growth and character arcs and just everything is just so good. So, yeah, you're not getting, like, the wonderful lyrical prose. But, like, are you actually getting that in Name of the Wind? Tell me you're getting that in Name of the Wind. You're not. You're not is the thing. Joe Abercrombie has some pretty writing. George R. R. Martin has some pretty writing. So, sure. The plot in The Way of Kings and the characters in The Way of Kings, I would argue are better than all three of those guys' characters. Uh, granted, I've only read two books of Joe Abercrombie's and I am enjoying them way, way, way better than I enjoy Patrick Rothfuss and George R. R. Martin's books. So I won't diss on his books so much, but I still think Way of Kings and the Stormlight Archive as a whole are better than the first two books I've read of the First Law Trilogy. So anyway, next up I have The Stand by Stephen King. I don't talk about Stephen King a whole lot on this channel and I think I might steal Kyle's idea from Reads with Kyle and do a video of my top 10 favorite Stephen King books because I've read a ton of his books. Um, granted, most of them I read in high school, so it's been a bit since I read most of them, but I still love his books and I'm very excited for the one that's coming out later this year. But anyway, The Stand is a book that you should go into knowing what it's about based on current circumstances. It's basically about a flu that like wipes out almost the entire world and the people left have to figure out how to survive. So this review. This book was just terrible. Dichotomous morality, heavy-handed storytelling, needless pandering, the glorification of the simple man, and the degradation of knowledge would not recommend. This review. They just wanted to come out here and say some big words. Like, they just wanted to come out here and be like, look at my vocabulary. This review tells me nothing about why the book is bad. <laughs> like, I understand some people not liking this book because it's huge. Like, this book is gigantic. It is 1,200 pages, I think. If you don't read a lot of huge fantasy novels, like, I can understand not being ready for a 1,200-page book. I get it. This review was just somebody saying, look at my vocabulary. Look how smart I am. I didn't read this book. <laughs> uh. I don't know. It's just, like, reviews like this crack me up because... I don't feel like this really tells me, like, like, I understand the words they're saying. I have a good vocabulary because I read a lot. Like, I get it. I get what they're saying, but I don't know. I think this is just them trying to toot their own horn and say nothing. That's just how I feel. Anyway, that was fun. <laughs> Thank you for watching my heated, heated tirades about some of these books. <laughs> I thought this was gonna be more fun funny, um, and some of these got me a little heated, but I still think in a fun funny way, I hope. <laughs> anyway, this was a lot of fun. Those are some of my favorite books, um, and those are some of the people that did not like these books. I'm sure I just stirred the pot a lot, with my talk about George R. R. Martin and Patrick Rothfuss. And I'm not sorry. I'm not. Because again, the whole point of this video was to understand that not everyone reads the same books, not everyone enjoys the same books as you. And so we can all just be out here reading books we like. 
But the person that dissed on Robin Hobb is wrong. The person that dissed on Fireborn is wrong. Otherwise, the rest of them can have their opinions. Thank you guys for watching. Of course, your support means the world to me. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you are enjoying my content. Let me know if any of these you also disliked so that we can have a, um, a full-on duel in the comments. Um, we will meet at dawn. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you for your support, and until next time.